So today we're going to look at finding slope from both graphs and tables. Slope is just rate of change. In a proportional relationship, the rate of change is fairly simple because we get to look at uh, x being a value of 1 and then see where that 1 point would be for the y-axis because um, the other point is just 0, so we're starting kind of from scratch. In a non-proportional relationship, we have to start with the first point that we're given that we can clearly see. And in this case, it's our y-intercept. So I notice a couple things about this graph. I notice that this graph is positive because it's increasing as it moves from left to right. And it's also linear because it keeps going at the same rate of change, which is why I can actually pull a slope from it. So our rate of change is going to be our change in y over our change in x. So we're going to start with the first point that we can clearly see, which is our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is 20. And the next point that I can clearly see is right here at two minutes, we have 30 gallons. So I'm just gonna look at the change here in scale for the y. It's going up by 10 and it went over um, one section here, which is going to be over two minutes. We can simplify that to five. So there are five gallons of water for every one minute. So now we can throw that into our equation of y equals mx plus b. So we have y equals, our slope is five, and we'd multiply that by however many minutes we're looking at, plus our y-intercept of 20. So here's another graph. This graph is a negative graph because it is decreasing from left to right. So our slope is going to be negative when we write it. So let's take a look again at our change in y over our change in x. So I'm going to start with my first point, which is the y-intercept. And then I can go ahead and use this point here because it happens on a nice intersection. So I can see that the change in y is going from uh, 10 to 8, so that's a change of 2, 2 centimeters, and this is a change of 1. So my slope is just going to be 2, right? 2 centimeters, or negative 2, 2 centimeters um, every 1 hour are being burned, so this is actually going to be a negative. So now we're going to put that in the equation of y equals mx plus b. So y is equal to negative 2x plus our y-intercept of 10. So let's take a look at a table. So in a table, we have our x and our y value. And we're going to compare the change in the sections of the table. So we went from zero to five hours, that was plus five, and then five to 10, also plus five, and then 10 to 15, also plus five. And then we compare the gallons. So we've added 20 gallons, we've added another 20, and we've added another 20. So quick note here, because the x is increasing by five each time and the y is increasing by 20 each time, when we graph it, it's going to be in a line, which again is what we call linear, right? Because that word line there. And because everything is increasing, both the x and the y, this is going to be a positive relationship. So it's going to increase as it moves from left to right. So we are going to look again for our change in y over our change in x, which we've already identified. Our change in y was 20. Our change in x is 5, and that's 4. So there are 4 gallons every 1 hour, and we'll go ahead and throw that into our equation of y equals mx plus b. So y equals 4 times our number of hours, x plus our y-intercept, and our y-intercept over here uh, would be 30 because at zero hours, it's 30 gallons. We're gonna do one more example here. If you wanna pause it and try it on your own first, you certainly may. So let's take a look at the change in hours. We've gone plus two, and another plus two, and another plus two, 
and then another plus 2. And then over here, we're decreasing by 20. And again, I notice every single time it decreases by 20. So for our change in y over our change in x, we have a change of negative 20 every two hours. So that's going to be negative 10 when we simplify it. So y equals mx plus b. We have y equals negative 10x plus our y-intercept of 80.